Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to review a new product from SpeedyB, the Bluetooth UART adapter. This device is going to connect to your flight controller using a free UART port, and then it will enable you to connect to the flight controller using a dedicated app by SpeedyB, using Bluetooth of course, and then you'll be able to configure all your beta flight settings using this app. So in this video, I'm going to go through the features of this adapter and show you how to set it up. Inside this small bag, we're getting the adapter itself, a heat shrink sleeve, a double-sided sticky pad, the instructions manual, and also this five pins adapter. The adapter itself is pretty small. It weighs 1.34 grams without its connector, and after adding the connector, the weight is 2.11 grams. In addition, its dimensions are 26.9 by 14.7 millimeters. Connecting the adapter to your flight controller is done using this five pins connector. Let's go over the layout. The top connector is the BLE switch. This switch is going to enable you to turn off the device whenever the throttle, for example, is above a certain point. It's pretty useful because when you fly in the quadcopter, you don't want another transmitter to be running. I'm going to show you how to set it up later in this video. The second pin is the TX, then the RX, then the volt in. It supports between 3.3 to 5 volts. And finally, on the bottom, we can find the ground. In order to use this adapter, you have to use at least Betaflight 3.1.0 and if you want to use the BLE switch feature, you have to run at least version 3.3.0. The next thing I'm going to do is to quickly connect the adapter to my flight controller. I'm also going to connect the BLE switch to S5 and later I'm going to show you how to configure the throttle switch. Now the adapter is connected. Don't forget that you need to connect the TX to the RX and vice versa. In addition, I didn't use eventually the S5 pad, I had to use the TX1 pad, which now connected to the BL switch. The reason I couldn't use the S5 pad is that it's not supported on my flight controller. What you need to do is to head over to this link over here, which I'm going to put in the description down below. And there you can find out which pin can be used for soft serial. And it depends on, the, on your flight controller. This one is running Omnibus F4SD. So the only one that was available for me to use was the TX1. After connecting everything, head over to Betaflight under the configuration of the ports, enable configuration slash MS on the UART port that you used and make sure to set the baud rate to 19,200. Then save the settings and now you'll be able to connect to the flight controller using SpeedyB's app. The SpeedyB configuration app is available on both Android and iOS. If you have iOS, you will have to run at least iOS 10 and on Android, at least Android 4.4. After downloading and installing the app, Open it up, connect the flight controller, refresh. The device you're going to be looking for is the SBBUA device, which has the nice SpeedyB icon next to it. Click this device and now you'll be able to connect to it. You can see that we have the standard bit of flight layout. So it pretty much lets you do everything. You can also go to the CLI. And you can see all the settings of this flight controller. It's not as smooth as configuring the flight controller on your computer using the USB connector. It's noticeably slower, but this is going to be useful when you are on the go. Of course, you can also use an OTG USB cable in order to configure your flight controller. But as far as I know, it's not supported on iOS. So this is going to give you an all around solution. Now I'm going to show you what happens after I'm going to arm the flight controller. You can see the throttle arm warning is going to be displayed. You can either stay connected or it advises you to disconnect from the app, which is the default option. And then it's going to turn off the Bluetooth model. You can see that this LED indicator was turned off. And now I won't be able to find it. Only when I will disarm the board, you can see that it will discover the board again. And now we'll be able to connect to it. Now, because I defined the throttle switch, even if the app is not going to be running, so now I'm going to disconnect from the board. You can see that after arming the board, let's hit refresh. Now it's not going to find the module. And after disarming it, it can find it again. Now I'm going to go over with you how to set up the throttle switch. So basically what you need to do in order to configure the BLE switch, head over to the link where you can find which port can be used for software serial. Look for your board. I've used the Omnibus F4 SD and you can see that Moto5 is not available here. The one I've used is the TX1, which was originally on A9. So basically you need to check which pad you would like to use, then head over to Betaflight, connect to your flight controller, 
head over to the CLI, hit dump, and now look for the pad you would like to resource. So let's say you would like to resource your lead strip. So lead strip one belongs to BO6. Copy these two values. Then you need to replace the following values. Lead strip one is going to replace the placeholder value. And BO6 is going to replace the placeholder port. Then copy these values, paste it in the CLI, hit enter, and then just hit save. After that, you're gonna be good to go and the BLE switch is going to work for you. So overall, I think that the SpeedyB Bluetooth Fjord adapter is a pretty neat device. It might be more useful for you if you're running iOS devices because on Android you can just use an OTG adapter and then you can configure your flight controller on the go without any problems. But still, even if you have an Android device, it's pretty cool to configure the flight controller wirelessly without having the need to use an OTG adapter. In addition, having the ability to turn off the transmitter when the quadcopter is armed is great. And I think that it's pretty much mandatory for you to update your flight controller to Betaflight 3.3.0 in order to use this feature because you want to cause as little as much of interferences when flying a quadcopter. Another advantage of using this adapter that if anything goes wrong with your USB port, you have a backup, so it's also a big plus. This board is now available for purchase, it costs $10 and now it's on sale for buy one get one free so you can get two units for $10 which I think is a pretty reasonable price. In the past I reviewed another product from SpeedyB, the SpeedyB Micro CCD Sec camera. It performed pretty well and I compared it with other Micro CCD cameras so I'll put a link over here if you want to check it out. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. I will put all the necessary links in the description box down below, but still, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye!